نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد we begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and sending salutations upon Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in surah al-an'am which is the seventh surah of the Quran in fact the sixth surah of the Quran which we which is surah al-an'am and Surah Al-A'raf is the seventh surah of the Qur'an. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in Surah Al-A'raf, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks to the children of Adam alayhi salam. Allah says, Ya Bani Adam, O the children of Adam, لا يفتننكم الشيطان كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة. Do not allow shaitan to deceive you. Do not allow shaitan to put you into Temptation and fitna. لا يفتن أنكم الشيطان. كما أخرج أبويكم من الجنة. Like how he took out your parents from Jannah. ينزع عنهما لباسهما ليريهما سوءاتهما. Thereby removing from them their clothing to expose them to their to their private parts. إنه يراكم هو وقبيله من حيث لا ترونهم. الله سبحانه وتعالى then tells us شيطان sees you. He and his associates. He and his associates. شيطان and his and 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 his شيطان has a crew, has an an army. There's not just one شيطان, you know. Like شيطان, there's many شياطين. There's many شياطين. So شيطان has Groups and troops and different different types of categories. People, certain shayateen are in charge of certain tasks. So you have the shaitan that's in charge of disturbing you in your salah. That particular shaitan, he has his own task. You have that shaitan that is that type of shaitan that is set out to cause this unity and to sow and to whisper in your ears so to cause this unity among you and your wife and among you and your family so there are different categories of shaitan and like Allah says shaitan cannot make you do anything he can only whisper in your ear so be wary of, be wary of shaitan because shaitan sees you but he is part of the unseen you cannot see shaitan <clears throat> So, إِنَّا جَعَلْنَا الشَّيَاطِينَ أُولِيَاءَ لِلَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah has made shaitan the awliya, the friends and the associates of those who do not believe in him. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the malaika our company and save us from the company of shaitan. Say, Ameen. So, among the verses recited, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us of the people of Ad, the people of Ad, and by the way, the people of Ad was that group of people who were who were the most powerful nation on earth. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala speaks about their strength, and Allah says, "Iram that al Imad, they were of the people of the city of Iram, that al Imad." which had towers which were of the highest and most most amazing structures this is the type of towers that they would build they were skilled in building huge huge towers and buildings and allah says something that wasn't there wasn't something that was ever like these towers and like these buildings this was the strength of the people of ad so they were blessed and they were given this very very strong ability and they were also blessed with some scholars deduce from this that they were blessed with advanced technology in their time this is how they would build these huge buildings even in mountains they would build from the mountains the highest of towers and highest highest of palaces and this was this was something they were very proud about so allah tells us about the prophet that went to them whose name was and that will be the question that you can answer today. The name of the Prophet that went to the people of Ad. And he, this Prophet, came to the people and said, Ya Qawm, O my people, 
worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, ma lakum min ilahin ghayru. You do not have any other God besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just to give you a little bit of a history, the people of Ad, the people of Ad, they were from the progeny of the people of Nuh. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in the time of Nuh alayhi salam, Nuh alayhi salam spoke to the people and Allah punished his people with a flood. So the remainder of these people, their generation, their descendants, it is said, were the people of, of uh, Ad. And so they, they, they lived in a place close to Yemen, around the Yemen area, and they would speak Arabic. So they were, they were Arabic speaking. Uh, so they were the fathers of the Jurhamite tribe. Uh, they, were, they would be the, uh, from those who, who, who then became the, the ancestors of Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but from among them. So we are talking now about them speaking Arabic, right? They did speak Arabic and they were, they were blessed with strength. So they would carve from the mountains, the mountains, these huge, huge buildings. And to the extent that, that the Prophet said to them, and who is the Prophet, by the way? So we can now say his name. Huh? Uh, Huda alayhi salam. Huda alayhi salam. We should make Doc an exception <laughs> from the answers. So Huda alayhi salam, it was the Prophet Huda alayhi salam. So Huda alayhi salam, then comes to his people and he says to them, They would build these places just for the sake of amusement. And they wouldn't even live in these towers. Because they, they besides they would, they would build so many towers that they were not for, for their own living purposes or for practical purposes. So he would say to them, Are you building in every opportunity, every way, every place, Ayatan, a huge sign and a huge tower, Ta'batun, in order to play, in order to find amusement, and thereby taking homes and places as if you're going to live forever, as if you're going to live and you're going to use these places. So this wasn't their, their own homes, but they were building these towers in places where they just for show and just for amusement. And they responded, Did you come to us to tell us to worship only one God and leave what our forefathers used to do? Leave what our forefathers used to do. So bring to us what you promise us if you are speaking the truth. And so this was a challenge that they challenged the Prophet Hud alayhi salam. And he said, قَدْ وَقَعَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ رِجْسُ وَغَضَبُ أَتُجَادِلُونَنِي فِي أَسْمَاءٍ سَمَّيْتُمُوهَا Verily, it has come upon you the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you disputing with me regarding the gods that you worship? which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not revealed any sign or anything regarding ma anzal Allah biha min sultan and then what does what does Hud alayhi salam then say to them he says to them fantadhiru wait inni ma'akum min al muntadhirin i too shall be waiting for for what for the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and anyway Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this and the other the other point that brought the downfall of these people was what? Arrogance. They were amused by their power and they were tested with the test of strength. So they failed the test of strength. And this is something we should learn from today in the, in the world that we live in, is that this is the common behavior and trait of people who are superpowers. That they tend to become arrogant and this tends to delude them. May Allah protect us from the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this was like a superpower nation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the, the buildings, Lam there was nothing that was like the buildings they built. 
Scholars say from this that no buildings after what they did and no buildings before this matched the style, the architecture and the design of their buildings. This was the height of, this, of their civilization. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought it all to the ground. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Hud alayhi salam warned them warning after warning and they didn't heed to the warning of, of Hud alayhi salam until Hud alayhi salam a few years passed. A few years passed and they, Allah sent them a drought. Allah sent them a drought. So now with this drought, they now their gardens and their beautiful, beautiful uh, places were now being affected because what would a person do without the main source of life which is water and so they were affected by this drought and then after after a few after a period of time allah sent to them a cloud and then they saw this cloud coming this dark cloud coming from the horizon and this huge huge cloud coming towards them and they started rejoicing 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 by this time, Hud السلام, and his followers had departed from this area of where they were and this cloud came close and as this cloud came close, they are happy, rejoicing that finally the drought is over and this drought came with a huge punishment, a tornado which toppled the, the, all their buildings and this wind came and it surrounded the, 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 their place, their city and all their and for seven days, seven alayali wa thamaniyat ayam, and eight day, it's eight days and seven nights, it surrounded them and surrounded them and toppled them from the ground into the air and 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 threw them on their faces. And Allah speaks about this in the Quran: "Kaanhum aajazu nakhlin khawiya." When it was finished, it was as if they were the plucking trunks. All their buildings were like the plucking trunks of date palms. This, like, all toppled to the ground that there was no remnant of whatever they had may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from arrogance and so this was this was uh, what happened with the people of Hud alayhi uh, salam called Aad may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect us and guide us subhanallah bihamdi subhanakallahumma